Kreska? Hey! How's it going, guys? Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to 20... Welcome to 2024. <laughs> it's gonna be a good year for everybody. But Keep mostly for you! Probably. I don't know. I mean, it is an election year, so Americans are gonna have a... A fun time, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, hi everybody. I hope you all had a lovely vacation over this. Um, I'm not Amer. I live in America, but I'm not American, so I get to not vote and Thank experience <laughs> all the negatives. Um. So yeah, I hope you guys had a wonderful uh, Christmas. A wonderful New Year's, and a wonderful uh, just general Jeepers. break to uh, to unwind, to chill, to do all that nonsense. Uh, let me put. Let's see. Here we go. I gotta thank some people for stuff because you guys are already up uh, up up to your to your business uh miss lothrop and sakura sakura cherry thank you so much for resubscribing appreciate it you guys uh lenny thank you so much for the prime sub tcat cam thank you also for the prime sub baymax09 thank you so much for resubscribing uh punk bunny mama and max loves Vienna, thank you so much for the biddies i'll reach new thank you so much for resubscribing deco thank you so much for 10 gifted subs thank you once more really appreciate it uh, Lavender Latte, thank you so much for gifting us up. Uh, Kaveh's Right Bunny Hair and Ritalwists, thank you so much for resubscribing. Arcadia VT, thank you so much for resubscribing. Uh, Keon's Nuts, thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome. Punk Bunny Mama, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Max Loves Yeni, thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs. Mikave, thank you so much for the gifting us sub. And Jendies, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, Zora Viatrix7, thank you so much for subscribing. And Lise, thank you so much for the eight months. Insert joke about 789 here. Mm. Nah, man. Oh my god. A Leafy, thank you so much for gifting five subs. Invisible String, thank you so much for the Prime. Zuri Stars, thank you so much for uh, two months. How was your trip to Chile? It was really good. It was uh, superb. I had a wonderful time in Chile. 
Um, it really gave me, like, my last trip to Chile didn't really feel like a vacation. Because I kind of had my whole visa thing happening, and that threw everything through a loop. Um, but then, yeah, it just, uh, it just kind of, it just kind of didn't, didn't feel like one. But now, I, I feel like I had, like, a proper vacation. And, um, even though some really f fucking wild things happened during the vacation, I still, uh... I still, you know, I felt like I enjoyed my- Like, I didn't let anything get to me, you know? I was in a, in a state of mind where I'm like, I'm gonna relax, and nothing's gonna get in the way of that. And genuinely, like, only one thing did, and that was me getting sunburnt really badly, and then getting Hell's Itch, which I wouldn't recommend. So please go out- if you're going outside, put on some sunscreen. Story time? Um, sure, I can talk about what Hell's Itch felt like. Um, I was, like, out in a... Like, I was visiting my aunt, uh, my aunt's, um, lakeside house with, uh, you know, my mom and dad and my brother and, uh, my brother's, uh, partner's, uh, family. And there was an outdoor hot tub. Like, a supernatural, like, you know, wood-heated hot tub outside so I just like chilled out there and like hung out with my dad and we were just hot tubbing and it was uh, it was really nice uh, but I didn't realize that the Sun in Chile is incredibly fucking strong so I was outside without any sunscreen for about two hours and that was a big mistake um, so I realized the day after that I was really badly sunburned um, and then, uh, the day after that, um, my sunburn started to itch. And it started off really slowly, but then it started to itch a lot more. Uh, just, just to, just for context, um, almost my entire upper back and, like, my shoulders and my neck were sunburnt. All those parts started to itch really, really badly. Um... And I was like, huh, I'm going to just slap on some aloe, some aloe vera, and just like, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to put some of that on. But it wasn't working. Like, I was like, oh, I'm saying it wrong to fuck with you, chat. Um, I know it's, I know it's aloe. I know, I know. It's al. I know it's aloe. Relax. Um, I say aloe because it pisses people off. Um, anyway, I slapped that shit on, but it wasn't working. Um, I was like, okay, that's a bit of a problem because it's itching a lot. Uh, so I took a shower hoping that that would work, and it didn't. Um, so the itch was getting worse and worse and worse, and it was very quickly becoming, like, very difficult to ignore. Um... And, like, this was, like, at 10, 10 p.m., 11 p.m. So I I was, like, about to go to bed, and all this started happening. And I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be able to really go to sleep uh, if if my skin feels like it's on fire. Um, so it got worse and worse and worse, and then I had to go to my parents' room and be like, Hey, um, I'm itching so much. This is, like, a bad thing. So my mom put got some talcum powder and like uh, put that on uh, my skin, and it didn't help. Like er anything we tried, it just didn't help. Everything was just not working. It was still itching so much, and I was my dad was like, "We probably need to go to the hospital because you're you're itching so much. It's it's th that's this doesn't seem good." Um, so while all of this was happening, I. Uh, I was looking up, like, heavy itch with sunburn, and that's when I found out about Hell's Itch. And I was feeling all of the symptoms that they described, and it's apparently, like, a not, like, a medically recognized thing. It's just something that happens that, that like, a lot of people have experienced. Um, so, uh, shit was, shit was kind of, it's apparently caused by, like, nerve ending damage because of the sunburn, and, like, 
the nerves reaction is to just fucking get super itchy. Um, so it legitimately got so itchy that I was like hyperventilating while I was trying to scratch myself in every part that was itchy. And I couldn't, it was, it was legit driving me insane. It was the worst. Like it just wouldn't stop. Like I it I scratched and it would hurt and it would keep itching. It was so so bad. Um, so my dad drove me to the nearest hospital, which was like 20 minutes, 30 minutes away. Um, and I was like barely able to talk because I was so busy scratching and like breathing heavily and just being like, please just make it stop. It's this is the worst experience of my life. Please just do anything to make it stop. Um, so they, uh, they, they, uh, hooked me up with an IV, and they pumped me full of, uh, corticosteroids, uh, and I think some painkillers, and it still wasn't doing anything. It still wasn't doing anything. I was like, it still itches. It still itches so much. It's, this is a nightmare. And, um... They had to load me onto a, uh, an ambulance and take me to a bigger hospital. And I think at some point they did sedate me because I remember passing out uh, and then just waking up in a hospital bed. And like the itch was still there, but it was like heavily diminished. Um, I think I think they put like some kind of anesthetic or a sedative because I just passed out at some point. I don't really remember what happened. Uh, all I remember is being in the in the ambulance, and it was still itching, and like, I was like thinking, I'm going to lose my mind, and then I, I like a second passed, and I was waking up in in the um, in the uh, hospital bed, um, and they were like, yeah, uh, I think you're good for now, um, like, you should probably just take it easy, and I'm like, yeah, I probably should. <laughs> So they gave me some anti like some strong antihistamines and some some paracetamol, and um, yeah, I'm good. I'm good now, guys. I'm good now. Like my skin's almost completely back to normal. Um, like I'm still like a teensy bit reddish, but like I, no pain, no itching, nothing. So I'm I'm good. Uh, but that evening I wasn't good. <laughs> I really was not good. I was having a really, a, a really rough time of it. Um, so, you know, this happened like two days, no. Did it? This happened like two days after Christmas. Um, so, yeah, it was super rough. Now I'm a changed man. Now I will always put on sunscreen. Because, uh, Boy, boy howdy, that shit was the worst. Never again. Never again. Um, but yeah, outside of that, it was, um, it was good. <laughs> it was a good trip. It, it, I got to, like, go to the lake and go to the beach, and it was great. I had fun. It was just, that was just a small speed bump. I guess it's gonna become tradition where and every time I go to Chile, something deeply horrible happens to me. <laughs> But just once, and then I'm good. <laughs> um, ben can have a little suffering as a treat. Uh, anyway, let me thank some more people. Uh, Siren Shade, thank you so much for subscribing. Grandpa's Beans, thank you so much for two months. Uh, Blinnies, thank you so much for subscribing. Kauhiru, thank you so much for three months. Uh, Yasumi, a hyphen's left pictorial. Thank you so much for the biddies. La Lavender Latte, thank you so much for gifting a sub. Akitoyas, thank you so much for two months. Too much yike, thank you so much for gifting five subs. Uh, DS, thank you so much for the prime sub. Andy Ratchik, thank you so much for two months. Ace Unicorn, uh, Tsumimi, thank you so much for your subscriptions. Andreo2, thank you so much for the prime sub. And Genie Bobini, thank you so much for the prime sub. Three rats in a trench coat, thank you so much for the prime sub. Andrew Ratchik, thank you so much for gifting five subs. Um, Annabelle SV, Space Rider, Charmin, Charlie, Ash and Trash, Rat Girl, Good thank go. you so much for your subscriptions. I appreciate it immensely. Volga Grind, Ghosting Zero, and Too Much Egg, thank you so much for your subs. Um, but yeah, 
That was the story of um, my sunburn. I'll hate them space. Thank you so much for gifting us up. Uh, I do want to talk to you guys real quick. I hate to I hate to open up the stream with some negativity, but I gotta talk to you guys about the Discord server. Um, so uh, if if some of you haven't heard, uh, I opened up a Discord server, and uh, it's been going good. It's been going great. It's cool having a space where people can share their memes and shit. Uh, yeah, I was in, bub in Buddy Daddies, by the way, uh, whoever asked that. Um, and uh, th this literally happened, like, on the 30th um, of January. Like, literally the day before New Year's Eve. Uh, Ghost, well, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Um, I got a big document full of concerns from a concerned user. Um, voicing how things were kind of getting out of hand in the server. And it was a bit of a mess. 30th of December. You know, guys, you know what the fuck I mean. Um, and it wasn't great. I mean, some parts of it, I was like, this feels like overreacting. But some parts of it, I'm like, mm, mm, I'm, I don't, I don't like this. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, so I wrote up a big document talking about everything. And I posted it in the announcement server, uh, announcement channel. Um, then people read it and were very understanding. But, lately people have been acting out a bit too much. There's been a lot of really weird, childish humor going around. And it's been making people kind of, you know, pause champ about everything. Um, so, I, I'm just gonna, I don't want to be mean to you guys. I don't want to have to tell you guys off like I'm your dad. But, if you guys are like going crazy you got you need to fucking relax a little you gotta chill like i don't i don't want people to join the server and the first thing they see is people like being like ha, 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 piss, ha, ha, ha. like no it's an 18 plus server and i'm not going to be checking your id when you join so the only way that i know you're over 18 is your word and if you start acting like a fucking 12 year old I'm gonna kick you, because I'm just gonna assume that you are a 12-year-old and you lied to get in. So please, guys, just behave. Like, relax. Don't be- don't be fucking jumping off the walls screaming about piss. Like, relax a little. You can have your funny little potty humor every now and again, but you guys have been running it into the ground. So, like, chill. Um, or at least be funny, but you get, it's not really funny if you just repeat it a lot. So yeah, Ben, who did you voice in Buddy Daddy's? Just some nameless grunt, I don't fucking know. I'm just some guy. What if we're 17 and not 18? Would, be, would, would we be given the entry? Could you, could you do me a huge favor? and try to figure out if 17 is over 18. I'm sorry, chat member, but Kiska? it's 18 plus, which means you need to be above 18 or above. <laughs> I don't, I don't write the rules. I'm sorry. Almost 17 is not 18 or above 18. Maths is hard. I'm sorry. You can still enjoy the stream if you're... Guys, don't tell me your fucking age. If, you, if you're telling me your age and you're under 18, you're kind of already fucking up. Like, uh, I'm... Like, what are you doing here? Get the hell out. I'm sorry to kick you out, but... It's, 18, I swear a lot, and we talk about adult things like alcohol and marijuana. So just don't do that shit. Uh, anyway, yeah, just don't just don't share your age on the internet, guys. Like, have have a bit of self-respect. Uh, anyway. 
yeah, so that was all I wanted to say about the Discord. We're gonna, I'm gonna overhaul the rules, the rules of the Discord. And I'm gonna write up some, like, expectations that I want from people in the Discord. And it's basically just gonna be, hey, fucking relax a little. Okay? Just chill. Um, so yeah. Uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna be playing, uh, the Genshin game real soon. How do you join- for anybody that's asking how to join the server, scroll below this, the stream window and look at my FAQ. Your answers will- will be answered. Your- your questions will be answered, even. Or- or just- yeah, exclamation mark discord. That too. Hey Ben, can you watch how it's actually made, but the sandwich one at the end of stream? I, I think I mentioned at one point on my Discord that if I become a reaction streamer unironically, I want you guys to kill me. So I could watch it, but I'll just be sitting there in silence and occasionally go. You have a preferred method of euthanasia. What a question. Um, um, hmm, that's a tough one. Uh, I want you to throw a barrel over my head, killing me instantly. Like, do, like, d fucking Donkey Kong that shit. <laughs> like, throw, throw a Donkey Kong barrel over my head and kill me instantly. There we go. That's, that's what happens if I start, uh, making reaction videos to things. How much Genshin do you plan on playing aside from the story quests? So, uh, I might have talked about the game plan with Genshin a while back, but for all of the new friends that have joined us, I want to get to the end of the Sumeru Archon quests, I want to do all Hate Them story quests, and I want to do Kaveh's Hangout. Uh, those are the things that I absolutely want to do on stream. Anything else outside of that? We'll see. Uh, I'm very selfish, and I only want to do the stuff that I'm tangentially related in, with. Um, but, you know, I've been really enjoying Genshin, so, you know, we could keep playing it. I don't know. But, like, that's my main, that's, like, my main directive. Um, so, yeah, we'll just get started real quick. Let me see if the game is actually up there. Krubles, thank you so much for gifting 20 subs! And, uh, oh yeah, there is an update. Cool. And Valkyrie, Vitals, Scuttlefish, thank you so much for your subs. Space Rider, thank you so much for gifting five subs. Mustard Uwu and the Whisper777 and, uh, Tick7. Ghostlal, I'll hate them bait. Thank you so much Good for your subs, guys. And Sino's Bear Chest and Say Sagacity. TTV. Or Sagacity. Thank you so much for the 50 biddies. Appreciate it. And the 45 biddies. And Seven, thank you so much for the 100 biddies. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I've heard about the, the Ace Attorney stuff in um, Fontaine. And that might, that might be why I... Uh, mechanic Cave Thoughts. I mean, I don't, it lo he looks great. He looks fantastic. I kind of wish that was one of his skins, but Kuska? it ain't. It's not gonna happen. Emigzan, thank you so much for the prime sub. And Lahi, thank you so much for gifting the sub. Speaking of Lahi, um, any FF14 gamers in chat? How are we feeling about Dawn Trail? I figured somebody would scream Hrothgals, um, 
pretty early on, so thank you. Uh, Pictomancer looks really fun. Uh, I'm definitely going to level a, a Viper. Um, the music in the trailer was really fucking good. Uh, especially for the bit with Kryle uh, doing the Pictomancer thing. Um, really excited for... to Tural looks like a really cool location. I kind of wish they didn't reveal, like, the big sci-fi city, because that would have been fun to be surprised by. Um, but I guess they just did. You haven't seen the trailer? Uh, well, go go watch it if you're fully caught up. If you're not caught up, caught up, then what are you doing? Have I have I been invited to any cons recently? Not yet. So guys, as a reminder, if you want me at your local con, email them and request for them to invite me. And then I'll be able to just show up and be like, "Hey, would you would you want a thing autographed?" And then you'll say, "Yes." And then we do a transaction, a, f a financial transaction, and then you get a cool print of whatever the fuck. A picture of that blonde guy. Andy from Under Unluck. Uh, but yeah, super excited for Dawn Trail. Um, really, 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 really jazzed. Um, the aesthetic of that expansion is very much what I enjoy. What's my main? I'm a warrior main. Uh, but I also play monk. And I am currently trying to get sage to level 90. Yeah, I, I fucking love Warrior, just because of the Unga Bunga. Are those your classes in D&D? No, in D&D I, like I, I like to play Barbarians. Speaking of D&D, um, Jonah already announced it, but I'm going to be playing D&D uh, &D with him and some other VTubers um, starting on February 2nd. It's not going to be streamed here. Uh, it's going to be streamed on, uh, I think, Nathaniel's channel? Uh, but yeah, I'm the token non-VTuber. I'm the token human. Um, some of the other VTubers that are going to be there, or I guess like just regular people, are going to be Grizzly, Leizu Shen, Juzo Mori, and Scylla Aria. If any of them are names that you recognize good yeah grizzly plays grizzly it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun um yeah i'm gonna announce it later uh closer to the date on the discord so uh folks can watch the game's unzipping game resources by the way so we're still we're still waiting on genshin to update if you haven't if you can't tell i haven't touched the game in a while Will you do more streams with Nazi? Um, I mean, I did mention that I kind of want to play Resident Evil 5 with him. And I think that would be... I don't know if we would stream it. I just want to play Resident Evil 5 with Nazi. Because <laughs> that game's great. It, like, it's one of the best co-op games ever made. If you just joined the Discord, make sure that you have, like, you allow uh, direct messages from people you share a server with, because that's how the authenticator works. Um, there's a system that, that way, like, it just makes it so bots don't invade the server and flood it with fucking links for free Nitro or some shit. 
Yeah, like, I don't want to drag Nazi in front of a live studio audience. You know, I, I as much as I enjoy having fun with him and everything, and, like, it's great, and it's it's super cool, um, I don't want to have to be the one to be like, Nazi, come, you have to... You have to, you have to come and, uh, and entertain the, the children now. Also, hi, Finn. Just sent my con an email asking for you. Give that user a uh, uh, heart emote. I was gonna say give that user a true, but th th this, <laughs> this doesn't work. Uh, Hollow Feather, cheer 200 breeze, and also asks, "Hi Ben, do you have any advice for getting into the voice acting field?" Uh, that is one of my FAQ questions. So scroll down and and check out the link that's there. But if you want a bigger answer, you can probably just go to voiceactingclub.com and join the Discord and read that shit there, too. Do I put your name and ask to be a part of the con, or is there more to it? I don't know, bro. It's your con. I'm just some dude. I mean, generally what you want to do is you just email whoever is in charge of, like, public relations or just the con, like, if the con has a generic email to ask any questions, you could probably just email them and all you're doing is just like, hey, uh, I want Ben Balmaceda as a guest at this con next time it happens. Thank you, God bless. Does anyone know if we make stuff, can we give it to VAs? I have accepted so many gifts from so many people uh, every time I've gone to a con. So you can go right ahead and do that if you so desire. I've gotten so much Kave merch. Would you go to the con a con outside the US like UK, for example? Of course. And now that my visa stuff is sorted, I can go wherever the fuck I want now. Like, getting back into America after my Chile trip was piss easy. It was literally no, no stress at all. So, you know, the seal has been broken. I can leave America whenever I want. OMG, come to Putan land. I know what I said. Come to Europe? Again, you guys have to be... <laughs> it's not something that I can decide, guys. It's not something I can decide. It's up to the cons, and it's up to you guys asking the cons. I can't, I can't just like knock on their door and be like, invite me. Like, no, it's up to you guys. I'm counting on you. If you could go to one place in the UK, where would it be? Birmingham. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. Who would go there? I do want to go back to London at some point. <laughs> Birmingham mentioned. <laughs> Do they pay you for attending cons? Uh, there's two ways that cons can pay you. They can either do an appearance fee or a guarantee. 
An appearance fee is we're gonna give you uh, money just for showing up. Like if the appearance fee is like 500 bucks, they're just gonna give me 500 bucks as part of like just the invitation. A guarantee is, hey, uh, we're gonna set your guarantee to $500. Um, if you don't make $500 worth of money from print sales and autograph sales, we will cover the like what remains. So if I only make $200 in print sales, the con pays me $300 to meet the $500 guarantee. So um, b basically, one of them is free money and the other one is not free money. Yeah, the first one is infinitely better for me because I get the appearance fee plus anything that I make from sales. But for the guarantee, it usually just means that I make everything from my sales and that's it. Hey Ben, what SMT games have you played? All of them. Um, let's see here. I played uh, SMT1, SMT2 on emulators, SMT3, SMT4 on the 3DS, SMT4 Apocalypse, SMT5, um, Devil Summoner Raidu Kuzunoha versus the Soulless Army, and then uh, Raidu Kuzunoha 2 versus uh, King Abaddon. Um, I played Soul Hackers, I played Strange Journey, um, I played Devil Survivor 1 and 2, and Overclocked and Record Breaker, um, I played, yeah, Digital Devil Saga, of course, 1 and 2, um, what else, I, I played Demi Kids at one point, and I thought it was okay, it was kinda, eh, uh. um, the original... I did try the original Devil Summoner, and I thought it was okay. Uh, I played Soul Hackers 2 a bit, and then I kind of fell off it, but I want to go Deep back birth. into it. Um, and... I played Jack Bros. On an emulator. Favorite SMT? Um, if it's mainline, probably Strange Journey. For spin-offs, uh, it's either Raido Kuzunoha 2 or uh, Digital Devil Saga 1 and 2. Oh, hey, Genshin's ready. I've played all the Persona games. Uh, three is my favorite. Gamers. I'm yes, I'm looking forward to Reload, and I'm gonna play uh, Fantasio as well, or Metaphor. Have I played FF15? Yes, I didn't like it. I mean, no, that's... I, mean, I I thought FF15 was okay. It wasn't great. The combat made me really sad. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, like, very tactical, like, <laughs> I'm a big nerd combat. And FF15 just didn't do that for me. Um, it was just the idea of, like, um hold square to kill and circle to dodge and you get other stuff but that's basically the long and short of the combat and like having magic be items it just felt so shitty I don't know I just didn't like FF15 all that much I thought the characters were great yes uh, Genshin, you hear Genshin because we're gonna play Genshin relax guys um yeah the combat didn't do the music was good in FF15 what does SMT stand for? Shin Megami Tensei. Like, I'm somebody that really loves, um... Ben, have you considered adding more 7TV, BTTV emotes? Probably. I'll add some more later. 
Um, have I played Bayonetta? Yes, I played one through three. Is the link to the Discord still working? Exclamation mark Discord, and you can figure that out yourself, probably. Have I played Ace Attorney? Yes, every single game in the series. What is your, my favorite combat playstyle? What do you mean by that? Like, favorite battle system? Have I played any of the Fate games or VNs? I've played all of Fate's Day Night. And by that, I mean I did Saber's route, and then I watched, like, playthroughs of, um, the other ones. I do need to play Samurai Remnant at some point. Have I played- have I played Lethal Company? No, never. Um... Am I into FromSoft games? It's funny you ask that, chat member, because I literally was playing Bloodborne right before the stream. Uh, because a friend of mine has been playing through it for the first time, and it's like hearing his experiences really got my motor running to play Bloodborne again. So I'm playing through as a, uh, a strength build, which I have never really done in Bloodborne, because I think the dex weapons are too much fun. Please do Samurai Remnant, it's good. I will definitely give it a play. Anyway. Let me just uh, make sure that I've got this set up correctly. Cool. Am I going to stream Dawn Trail? Probably not. Um, I don't want to dox my Eorzea self. I love you guys, but I, I want to keep my FF14 life separate from the rest of my life. Hey, what's up? Maybe at some point I'll I'll maybe reconsider. Like, cause I kind of do want to do raids with uh with chat and everything. It's giving me the still a reunion thing Once, too. There was a glorious kingdom established among the heavens. I'm not a limsa cat girl. I'm an aura girl. And I started as an Aura dude, but their fashion looks fucking horrible. So, I, 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 uh, Fantasia'd. Look at all this shit. Look at all this nonsense. What the fuck? Hmm. I heard Navia, uh, Navia, Navia, how do you say her name? Navia. 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 I heard she was fun, so I want to try. Navia. She shoot the gun. That's a that's a crunchy sound. Ooh. I kind of, I kind of dig the shooting sound. I love it when there's good, like, gun sounds in games. That's probably why I like 13 Sentinels so much, because those guns sound so punchy. Nice and spicy. Ugh, you can 
give up. <laughs> hey there. Oh, I see. Load up the bullet. Is this all you do as this character? You just go around shooting people and then she gets bullets and then you shoot more? Holy shit, that's a lot of damage. So much damage, holy shit. Is she, um, do you auto attack, like, do you use her regular attacks for anything, or is it literally just you, you swap her in, you shoot gun, and then you swap her out? Is there any point, uh, to, you know, swinging, swinging the, the sword around? Oh, oh, her E infuses? Okay, that's that's good to know. Interesting. Very interesting. Level your wanderer, dude. Because you said that, I'm not gonna do it. Hot damn. Chris Scott? Don't tell me what how to do things, chat, or else I'm gonna cancel the stream. Gamers. What is this interface that they added? Is it just like, hey, do this shit, or else you'll like this is what you need to do to progress? They just give a ton of freemos, huh? Good roll. Did she just say good roll? I kind of want to get Ayaka though. I haven't actually gotten her, and she's she's Virgil. Do I have a, I don't think I have a good cryo or a good, um, uh, geo. Oh, I do have Ganyu as a cryo DPS. I don't really have a geo DPS. Hmm. It's it's literally. Oh my God! Wait, hang on, guys. I know what this is. One person with a claymore and a gun, and the other person with a katana that does super fast draw slashes. This is just Dante and Virgil, but they're anime girls. I'm on to you. I'm on to you, Mihoyo. I'm on to you. I know what you're doing with these reruns. Uh, why, why the fuck? Why the fuck? Why the fuck? There we go. Oh, it's not giving me the uh, the pan out. I guess D is just staring at me. As soon as I hit escape, we're gonna talk to this woman, right? I got yep. Hey, Dia. Right on time. Do we learn anything from the creamy nose? <laughs> We'll know any moment now. Paimon's been wondering. You seem to know Candace pretty well. Have you been friends for a long time? We've known each other for some time now. She's a pretty interesting person. 
Even though she's an extremely strong warrior, she never misuses her powers against others. Oh, Paimon knows what you mean. Like a lot of martial artists say, never take a fight outside the ring. So true. Yep, I guess you can put it that way. It takes strong convictions to be as dedicated as she is and shoulder that kind of responsibility. Us mercs, on the other hand, we pretty much live from one day to the next. Well, Paimon thinks you're great, too. Really? Thanks for that. Oh, Sano's here! And he's pretty early, too! He's just brooding. Yes. I was here yesterday to help out a little. To help out? By doing what? Sharing some interrogation techniques. Oh! Um, you mean you taught Candace some more... persuasive methods? Right. Hmm. Come on in, everyone. Come on, let's go inside. I see. Candace, where? Whoa, you look furious. Do I? Huh. What gave it away? Oh, there's no mask that can hide true bloodlust. Cover up your eyes, and it'll still show itself at the corners of your mouth. Perhaps I need to work on my composure. Still, hmm. it's perfectly understandable why I'm angry. I'm sure everyone present would agree. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, please, yes, ma'am. Don't be this anymore. <laughs> We're gonna die. Well, looks like Sino taught her well. <laughs> hmm. You fear death yourselves, yet you do not hesitate to place the lives of others at risk. <laughs> the absurdity is mind-boggling. It's mind-baffling. The what call mad scholars are known to us as the village keepers. They are vital members of our community, and some even count them as family. You come here to my village, and you treat my people as nothing more than stepping stones towards your goal. Tell me, what would you do to you in my position? Uh, mercy! Please have mercy! You've made your bed. Mr. Electric, you kill this man! Dwellers, but there is one thing that I understand better than you. The resurrection of King Deshret will only result in war. And war serves no one. The people of Aru Village care little about which god is in power. Life may be tough and tiring, but we wish to preserve our way of life. A war would only cause us to lose all that we have. And that is not a responsibility that you can afford to shoulder. Uh, we understand. We're sorry. I'll tell you everything I know. Please, just let us go. I'm listening. Uh, you might not believe this, but it wasn't us who came up with this idea. Someone was spreading rumors in the tavern. That's how we ended up hearing about King Deshret's resurrection. Some mystery rumors. man told us that mad scholars will make a mysterious man to usher in King Deshret's resurrection. They give their lives, and we can get anything we wish for. They're called village keepers. Slip up again, and you'll regret it. Uh, yes, sorry. <laughs> it was all that mystery man's doing. He told us to spread the word about King Deshret's resurrection and talked us into helping him. In return, he said he'll help facilitate the resurrection process. Uh, I'm not sure. That's one. That's one. Huh? One what? Strike. You get a total of three. Then, you die by my hand. Point of order. Does this confirm that baseball exists in Tevat? Is baseball real? Because, uh... 
three strikes and you're out is that that's baseball invented that so baseball is canon wait i'm telling the truth we don't know anything it was all him Zaki's like, oh no, those are the rules of baseball, a, a sport that exists in this world. Out of their houses in the night with some kind of incense. We take them to a junction outside the village. Then the mystery guy takes them from there. <laughs> it's Blitzball. You gotta believe me, please. I'm telling the truth, I swear. Just ask them if you don't believe me. Listen, I want more games to have Blitzball. That game, that sport is top tier. That was indeed the truth. Traveler, go on. I, but I was I wasn't saying it. I, 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 who's who's the who's the mysterious man? You have to believe me. If I knew that, I would have told you his name right away. I'm not risking another beating to keep his secrets. No way. He, uh, um, that guy. He wears a cloak, and he's always careful to cover his face. Uh, he calls himself King Deshret's envoy. I believe I may know what's going on. Uncle Anpu? What do you mean? <laughs> oh. <yeah. laughs> Smooth. So, uh, but hang okay. on. Okay, speak. Kuzka? Why did he do that? <laughs> this... <laughs> Was Sina just like, wait, before you continue speaking, let me just kill these three men. <laughs> if my suspicions are correct, this mystery man they speak of could be from the academia. Sina really was like, I'm going to do what's called a pro gamer move. By committing murder for no reason. Some time ago, people from the Academia attempted to take the Village Keepers away. I refused, insisting that they are part of our community. It strikes me now that this secretive character... Did you say strike? the same goal they had. Like a strike from baseball? A sport that exists in Tevat? Which means it's highly likely that the Academia was purposely spreading a false rumor to trick the Radicals into delivering the Village Keepers right into their hands. <laughs> they were the ones who brought them here to begin with. Now they're trying to take them back? We aren't gonna let that happen. It's all about the Mets, baby. The Mets. Let's go Mets. Let's go Mets, baby. Let's go Mets. Not the Academia again. Just as I thought. But what could they want with the Village Keepers? People are nothing but tools in the eyes of the Academia. A change in their plans likely means they found another way to exploit the scholars. <laughs> I legit, like, really like baseball, guys. Regardless. I think it's a fun sport. Our top priority now is locating the village keepers. You're right. Isaka's still waiting for news on his grandpa. Someone just asked why. <laughs> Time to go. Let's leave the village and try to track them down. <laughs> it's, but it's fun. Yes. Pack up and get ready to leave. You got it. Candace, I'll let you deal with the Radicals. Leave everything outside the village to us. All right. Let's meet back here once everyone's ready. I don't like, I don't have a favorite team or anything. I'm like pretty uninvolved in sports. I just like the sport itself. Like I, I, I have not sworn allegiance to any one team. What position would I play? I mean, I used to be a shortstop. Let's get some food in us and then we'll... Whoa! <laughs> Jump scared by this fucking nerd. Where did you come from? Let's go. As you can see, I am merely sitting here and reviewing what we have deduced thus far. And now you're suddenly sitting here musing to yourself? Where have you been anyway? Hey, what's with the silence? You never think things through before asking questions. 
I'm giving you some time to make up for that. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> giving you some time. Like you. Oh, Paimon, this better be a banger. This better be a banger nickname. How do you... How do you fumble the bag this badly, Paimon? He's green. He's got a book. Bookworm was right there. And you, you beefed it. You but blew it. Super obvious to pick with this guy. Makes it so hard. Are you... Are you... Are you fucking serious? There's nothing obvious? He's always reading a book. He's wearing green. He's got his little headphones in. You can call him Shrek. You can call him Bookworm. You can call him fucking nerd. You could. There's so many. There's so many angles to play. There's so many angles to play. Worms are pink, though. Sh sh shut up. Well, you've heard nothing to suggest I left this whole time. So clearly, I stayed in the village to investigate. Anyway. You plan to leave Aru Village and keep searching for the truth of this matter, yes? <sighs> yep. We're not gonna find out anything more by staying here, so we thought that we might as well take the search elsewhere. <sighs> Enough with the silent treatment! He's giving us time to think of a nickname. No. I'm just surprised that you decided to team up with him. All hate them. You haven't helped us out at all ever since we arrived at Aru Village. Bold of you to question our choices. Yeah, you're all talk. <laughs> While you were investigating, I just remembered a I funny meme. I'm not going to tell to you guys. Which I've now finished. Really? Paimon doesn't believe you. To be honest, we aren't really a team, so I have no obligation to inform you of my whereabouts. Not to mention that going separate ways allowed me to find some important information that you all had missed. Huh? Right here in the village? You see, I, I'm super smart, so I know where everything is. I found a clue. Correct. What did you learn? I'm going to take you to someone. But before that, you need to understand where she's coming from. What does that mean? How do you think the residents of Aru Village feel about what we're doing? In other words, do you truly believe every single word the villagers tell us? You mean, some of them lied to us? You think somebody would do that? Just... Just go to Aru Village and tell lies? Hiding the truth does not necessarily equate to lying. Again, these people have their reasons. Remember what Gandis said? Most people in Aru Village don't necessarily care which deity is in charge of Sumeru. That's because whether King Deshret or the Dendro Archon has power is of little significance to them. By contrast, the perils of their daily lives are ever-present concerns. They won't simply share everything they know with you without good reason. That's why you believe there was no further information to be found in this village. Glad you're following along. Among those you have talked to, there's someone who was consciously keeping you out of the loop. In fact, she's been observing your every move since you arrived. He said among those, not am among us. Relax, chat. The reason Relax. Is, to someone who only wants to live their life in peace, any external factors introduce unpredictability into the equation. <gasps> those eyes. Those fierce eyes. You... You look like a real fighter. <laughs> this also reminded me of a meme. You know, you know that that uh that one image that's like out of your friends, which one are you? Truck freak, crazy ass, the fighter. Don't change the subject. It's quite obvious that she's intimidated by Sino's authority. And I feel like I made that joke last stream when right. she said that, but you were asking about the. I mean, the mad scholars. 
She corrected herself mid-sentence because she's aware that there are King Deshret fanatics in the village. If she sounds too friendly towards the village keepers, she could How did you get that out of this interaction? Just because she said, that you look like a fighter. So, out of the four friends, Sino is the fighter. I think it's been a few days since I last saw them. I usually go to bed pretty early, so I'm not too familiar with what goes on at night. Remember? She made a point of denying her involvement in anything that occurs at night. Who's the truck freak? But honestly... <laughs> Sympathetic towards them. That's a good question. Even though they act a little strange, I guess Kabe would be the closest the one. If it weren't for them, my house would have collapsed long ago. <laughs> Tainari is the truck freak? No. Yeah, are you guys forgetting that mechanic Kabe already happened? And fucking, I think, how do you pronounce that word in Cyrillic? Is it, is it drug? After speaking to the village chief, it became clear that the village keepers had protected Aru village at night. In other words, the young miss was very much awake during that time. Then, why would she lie? So, so out of Alhatham and Tainari, who's crazy ass and who's Drug? By getting involved with an outsider, she risks drawing unwanted attention to herself. As for why she might be so wary about all this, <laughs> maybe you should ask her. I'll pass on this one. You said that she is afraid of me. If so, it's best if I stay out of this. We're on it. Do I really have to ask? Because they, both of them could be crazy ass. Oh, I should follow. I should follow the 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 crumbs. Miss Shawnee, as we discussed earlier, I've brought someone with me. Yeah, don't post spoilers, guys. Mr. Or else I won't feel things when story back. moments happen, and then you guys How will be upset I that, sure I, that I underreacted to something. Huh? And I'll yell, I, I could have I could have felt something, Chad! I could have felt something! Go ahead and talk to her. You'll get the answers you want. Go on. Earn her trust. Is it really that simple? <laughs> Go on, earn her trust. Uh, may I call you Traveler? Well, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, hi, Traveler. I want to ask you something. Everybody else calls Do me you Traveler. Think the resurrection of King Deshret can truly change Sumeru for the better? Lucian Blaze, thank you so much for the, for two months. Also, thanks to, you know, everybody for the biddies. Max loves Vienna. I'll hate this left, left pectoral. Uh, Ackmorn. Cool name. Uh, and thank you for gifting out a sub. Uh, five subs, Ackmorn. And Vivido Curiosa. Thank you so much for gifting a sub, too. Appreciate it, guys. Also, soup time, so I should probably... May I one day tell you how to pronounce... Fieni? Yeah, probably. I'm. Is it Fieni? Or Fieni? Okay. Well, there we go. Why is that? It will only result in conflict. That's very similar to what Miss Candace says. I know you two are friends. That's why I'm willing to talk to you. Even though I do have some reservations. Kiska? Before, I wouldn't even have the courage to ask something like this. Traveler, do you believe our lives will get better? No. 
I'll do my best. Yeah, we came here from another nation, so it isn't wrong of you to be weary. And we aren't really residents of any one nation. But even so, we've met lots of people from different places, and we've always fought for what we believed in. We have friends in Sumeru, and we want to help them. That's why we decided to stay here for a while. I Kiska? want to trust you. My apologies for posing my questions like that. But to be honest, I didn't expect you to come back for more information. Huh. Okay. Oh, hey, them told us you have your reasons. It's okay. We understand. The fact is that I'm... Only one side of my family is desert folk. I don't really fit in anywhere in Sumeru. Some believe in the Dendro Archon, while others believe in King Deshred. I don't belong to either side, and neither side would want me. Speaking of which, the radicals mentioned that they despise traitors. Do they just think that anyone who's different from them is a traitor? Yeah. Some people can be so narrow-minded when it comes to bloodline and beliefs. It makes no difference what I say or how I behave. I'll always be suspected of having ulterior motives. Slowly, I just stopped talking to people. I pretended not to hear or see anything. All I want is to live my life in peace. And then it happened. The village keepers who had helped me disappeared with no explanation. And I didn't dare breathe a word about it to anyone. Until now. Mm. You can tell them. I'm sure he'll keep your secret. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what I told I'll hate them. I actually have a sharper sense of hearing than most. Sometimes I hear strange yeah, supersonic hearing. The night. <gasps> there are ghosts. Perhaps. I'm not sure. Perhaps. It's faint, but it's definitely the sound of crying. It comes from far away in the distance and always carries very <laughs> ghosts <raw emotion. laughs> in this world where people can conjure fire and shit from their bare hands because they have a magical rock that was given to them by the gods. But ghosts is where I draw the line. <laughs> it used to be louder and more frequent, but ever since you arrived in the village, it doesn't seem to happen as often. And when it does, it's much quieter. I have to focus really didn't, hard. Didn't we, like, out. already fight ghosts? Gamers. Or, like, in Inazuma, there was a quest line involving ghosts. That we, you... We, I beat... I punched some ghosts already. And, yeah, Hu Tao literally has ghosts as, like, her attacks. I confirmed this with the guards on night duty. They also have someone with a good ear. And he's heard similar sounds at night. But because we're in the middle so of the Paimon desert, so Paimon being like a be ghost, it's like beasts than ghosts. No, bro, we've already killed like dozens of ghosts. Those people are double dead. Relax. There's really nothing around these parts, except for an old hospital not far from the village. Yeah, the ghost in Wangshu Inn too. Like we've we've fucking we've seen hella ghosts at this point. I think they used to use it for treating Elazar. But it's been abandoned for years. And yeah, I'll crank up the uh, audio after this cutscene. Yeah, let's go. Oh, there we go. Is that better? Go to Le Hospital. Is it not giving me the the bread come trail? I know what I said. Oh 
my god, combat, finally. Outlines your fate. The statue was quietly now. Scanning. <laughs> that dude fucking jumped in with everything like wow. Ugh. It's in terrible shape. And there's sick monsters! Watch out! Oh no! Let me leave you a turn. Here comes the catch. Taking the turn for the better. Watch and learn! Take Explosions! Enemy reinforcements? Oh no! Does it ever feel weird playing as the character you voice like you hear yourself, but it's not yourself? I mean, it is a little weird. Just because by nature of listening to your own voice played back to you, it, it always sounds a little bit weird. But also, it's really cool. Like, I'm doing all these cool noises and being like, ha, yeah, watcha! And killing things, and it's cool. It makes me happy. Hmm. He looks super serious. We gotta stay on our A game too. Hmm. This is the hmm. one. It is weird listening to your own voice, even if you're a VA. That's just human nature. Like we're not, we're not like genetically engineered to really like enjoy listening to the sounds of our own voices oh. played back to us, just because of the way like our bodies are set up. Where we listen to ourselves talk using, you know, bone conduction instead of with your eardrums. <laughs> what about listening to other guys? Well, that doesn't really matter because your eardrums... Are, are listening to that exclusively. There's no, there's no moment where somebody will talk to you and you will hear it with your bones, unless they are like in your bone structure. And if that happens, you know it's probably you're you're gonna look like some fucking grotesque abomination. How do you know about the bone thing? I uh, I like to read up on things. Because I like to pretend I'm smart. Let's go in and take a look. Check my messages from Alejandro. Oh. <sighs> yeah. Hey, oh hey, Thumb. We haven't found Squat. Are you sure we aren't wasting our time here? He asked me a very fun question, everybody. Oh, we're planning things. Don't leave us in suspense. What is it? I'm leaving you the heck in suspense, chat. But knowing him, he'll probably be the first one to talk about it. So I'll just leave it to that. 
We're gonna do, we're gonna do a co-op stream, but it'll be it'll uh, it'll have a very a very specific flavor to it. Cool. Patience. Shawnee Wings of Ash, thank you so much for uh, subscribing. Hachi, thank you so much burn. for the biddies. Lucian Blaze, thank you so much for uh, the subscription. And Animo Leo, thank you so much. Appreciate it, guys. Until then. Oh, did he? Did he already say? Did he, did he say what it was I'm already? A break. <sighs> and just like that, he sits down. Wait, he even brought a book to read. Yeah, we're going to do a Spanish stream. If you don't speak Spanish, come on by and learn how to talk in... It'll be like Dora the Explorer, but it's two dudes from this anime game that you all seem to enjoy. What are you reading? Let Paimon see! Okay, sure. But I'm, I'm going to be, you know, going heavy with the Chilean stuff. Position, which is the positional propensity the, the natural of an posi entity the natural, in natural the natural motion position in contrast with an object in forced motion? Huh? When free from external influences, every entity displays the tendency to follow its natural trajectory. So um you got that? This dude literally sits down and pulls out a fucking physics textbook. Oh, Paimon gives up. You keep reading your book. See ya. He's like, hmm. Time for some light reading. And then he pulls out an idiot's guide to, to physics. Hmm. Yes. I don't understand. How is he so relaxed? Look at him, reading an impossible book in a creepy place like this. It wouldn't kill you to read a book once in a while, Paimon. Hey, Paimon's your Tibet travel guide. Paimon knows plenty of useful stuff already. And anyway, it's not Paimon's fault that the books people read in Sumeru are so complicated. They're, they're really not. Ominous shot of the sky? Never mind. Paimon's getting so sleepy. Huh? What was that sound? I hear... I hear noises in there. What age did I start voice acting at? Uh, 15. There it is. There it is. It's coming from that direction. It it just sounds like a like a, a chimp going. Is the sound coming from here? Huh. I can't hear anything. It's from below. Uh, but there's no way we can get down there. Something is off about the interior here. As I thought, there's a hidden structure. Wow! It's like they tucked another hospital into this one. Well, How is this a hospital? It's a it's a fucking here. crypt. Let's keep exploring. This is a crypt. This isn't my first trek into the desert, but I can never get used to the heat. <sighs> is there no shade anywhere? I'll quit your whining. Oh. So it unlocks this area, but then it kicks me right out and is like, investigate not the area that you just opened up. Uh huh. Sight clear. 
ですかゲームデザイン Got bounced around a bit there, buddy. A bitter pill to swap. Fight clear. I don't want to use my burst. Oh, I guess now I do have to. Breaking new ground. Wonder if with just uh, Sing Cho's, that's enough. From there, come at me. All right, now where's that damn fourth chaos emerald? Oh, there it is. Oh no! Mind the side effect. Bust it. Scan it. All right, we we activated three arbitrarily placed um, switches, which. Has unlocked this laser wall under the ground. Minty bean soup. Chat, if I voiced a Sonic the Hedgehog character. What Sonic the Hedgehog the char character would I voice? A lot of people saying Eggman, which I kind of appreciate. Look, there's someone over there. Sonic is trapped in there. Good idea. Let's approach him slowly. I'll have to give myself a promotion. Wait. Get a load of this. You're... You're... <sighs> Do the whole Eggman moon speech? No. <laughs> he can't speak, and his eyes are unfocused. But he looks too young to be anyone's grandfather. This dude is fucking. He's, uh. Also, why is he the only one here? Is he just hanging out in the basement of this abandoned hospital, just fucking going. <laughs> just for hours on end? Didn't expect to see him here. You know him? He's Razak, a senior of mine at the academia. Razak. He's a scholar, too? Is he the kind that holds up in a forest and mumbles stuff about training? No. And that's the problem. Razak was never involved in any of those things. He never trained in the forest, let alone reach Satyavada life. My favorite line of that snap cube thing is still just Eggman going, I miss my wife, Tails. I miss my wife. I'll be back. Leaving that question aside for the moment, him being here alone means that we might be too late. Looks like they've already taken everyone like away. Like, it sounded so genuine when For he said it. reason, they left Razak here. <laughs> Perhaps they simply didn't have time to come back for him. Like, the sigh and everything, like, it just felt so real. <laughs> hmm. 
There are drag marks on the ground. They're clearer by the doorway. Someone was forcefully drawing a cart that was loaded with something heavy. And also, like, I think it's the other... It's not the... It's not the main moon speech, but it's the one from, I think, like, the dark story. Or... He's, like, yelling at the little girl and her stupid nose and then just says, Give me your phone! But the way he says it is just so funny to me. Loaded with people? That is one possibility. Hmm. It looks like they were in a hurry. As if they were afraid of being caught. In their haste, they failed to notice Razak I'm taking everything from you! Give me your phone! The symptoms are identical. Looks like we found living proof. Huh? Why do you say that? Allow me to jog your memory. Recall your time at Port Ormos. Don't you think his symptoms look familiar? It, it's, it, it was Morbius. It was Morbius. Oh, now that you mention it, they're acting the same way. It was Michael Morbius. Correct. The academia is behind all of this. What was my first VA role? Hmm. That's a good question. I don't actually remember. It isn't difficult to deduce their rationale. I think, um... Hmm... God, what was it? First, the Academia spread a false rumor remember. of King Dashrit's resurrection, emphasizing the role of the village keepers, the mad scholars who were exiled to Aru Village. These rumors were all the persuasion <laughs> Someone of the says, radicals. Me media, personally, I would have remembered. <laughs> village I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To them, of course, through rounding up the scholars, they were actually helping the Academia. It's 15 years ago, and like. There's stuff that I've just completely disregarded in my memory. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a fan dub of something. I know I did I did do some fan dubs ages ago. Not of anime, but of like games. I did like a Phoenix Wright thing. And a Final Fantasy IX thing. As well as being able to exploit the radicals for their own ends. This scheme has one further advantage to the Academia. Life for the Desert Dwellers has been brutal ever since King Deshret's death all those years ago. Beneath the surface, feelings of desperation are widespread. Funnily enough, chat, I did do uh, uh, the World Ends With You fan dub years and years and years ago. You'll never guess what character I played in that fan dub. Rhyme, no. Josh, <laughs> no, I wish. That would have been great. Eggman, Eggman isn't in Twoey, bro, I'm sorry. Neku, no. It would have been, it would have been, like, full circle if if I did play Neku. No, I played, uh, uh, Karia, like the lollipop reaper. Many would give everything they have for the prospect of something better. Anyone looking to exploit that for their own ends simply needs to make a few empty promises. And I did kind of want to play Karya in the anime dub when I read for it. I'm like, man, it would be cool because then we would have been hella full circle. But then I, I booked Neku instead, so... <laughs> Even if complications arise, people will see that those involved are all followers of King Deshret and look for no further explanation than differences of belief. A deep-seated mistrust of the desert and everyone in it by the rest of Sumeru will make sure of that. The notion of an academia plot wouldn't even cross their minds. It may seem like a simple strategy, but it is able to work wonders under Sumeru's current circumstances. Evan Sayari, thank you so much oh, that for makes two a lot of sense. <laughs> two! The village chief's theory, too! But there's still one very important question. Wasn't it the Academia that brought the Scholars to Aru Village in the first place? Why does it want them back now? Throughout this process, one thing has changed. The Scholars' identity. First, they were Scholars. Then, they became Lunatics. 
After that, they were exiles. And finally, they become missing persons. An exile is still patently a living, breathing human being. But when someone if you wanted to audition for person, two different characters, how would that work? Does it depend question. on the project? If you can't find someone, you have no way of knowing what you, exactly happened to them. That you, makes you missing send them both an ideal resource. Ben, I swear you've been doing the Sumeru quest for years. Well, I guess that's that's it for the stream then. Thanks, everybody. I'm taking too long, so I guess I'll stop. I'm just fucking with you. Resource? Uh, it's taking me forever to do it because I'm only playing this game on stream. One possibility is that the information in their brains could be extracted into knowledge. If captures. I really wanted to, I could just go through this entire game off stream and then, you know, come back to the stream fully caught up and then. What is there to play? You mean hand knowledge comes from people's brains? This is just like the plot of Psychonauts. With the technology of the Sumeru Academia, it's entirely possible. Perhaps the process caused them great suffering, which is why they cry out in the dead of night when no one is watching them. Would I ever multiplayer Genshin with Sayu? Probably. I mean, I'm surprised we haven't actually done that yet, but... He's he's got his like super meta level ten billion team with level five uh, rank five ascension weapon that does ten trillion damage per hit and it's super optimized and my stupid ass is here with this blonde dude with a briefcase shooting lasers like nah man so the human brain. Think about this. I'm the Academia Scribe, after all. I'm familiar with their projects. Yeah, he's got a C6 Sino. Like, come the fuck on. Anyway, judging by Razak's state, the contents of a divine knowledge capsule were extracted from his mind. But something went wrong in the process. He's played with other VAs before who don't play often. You're fine. I don't want to be... I don't want to be a burden to him, okay? Or perhaps his curiosity got the better of him. And he used such a capsule for himself. But uh, Hyman's a little confused. Can they just use anyone's brain? No, that can't be right. Most of the mad scholars had mad contact with the divine consciousness in the forest. That's what the academia is after. It's also safe to assume this knowledge has something to do with the Fatui. The Fatui, excuse me. The Doctor, and also the Balladeer. They're using Divine Knowledge Capsules to turn the Balladeer into a god. The look on your face tells me you've realized the answer. No. That's right. To some scholars, gaining knowledge about the gods is their entire life's pursuit. Extracting canned knowledge is just one of the extreme measures they turn to. Canon voice? Yeah, However, true. I can't help but wonder... What do they seek to gain from divine knowledge? The academia is going out of their way to look for forbidden knowledge, but what is their ultimate goal? I've spent quite some time trying to analyze the contents of the divine knowledge capsule, but to no avail. It seems like my way of thinking is too different from Yeah, theirs. I love how we're having this conversation while this dude is next to us having like a complete personality stuff. death. All scholars seek to expand the horizons of knowledge. But I'm not particularly interested in gods, so I don't share their degree of zealotry. Extracting information from people as if they were lifeless objects? <laughs> if this is the direction of academic progress, then the academia may as well shut its doors. Sounds like you're really against all this. Of course. The academia's actions run contrary to their rules. Whether it be academics or knowledge, everything has its boundaries. If those lines are crossed, the rules and order that govern everything in the world will be destroyed. This matter needs to be corrected. Just like fixing a typo in a book. Wait, didn't you step in to help? I'm gonna make this about books again. Because I'm a nerd. Not to be callous, but no. My criteria are a little more restrictive than that. There is no shortage of suffering in Sumeru, 
and the same can be said for the rest of Tibet as well. What do you plan to do about that? Save every last person? Um, probably not. Uh, Paimon's not sure. Your motives are more specific and personal. You can say that. Simply put, I don't blindly place my faith into strength or heroism. I do what I want. The divine I do what knowledge I want. capsule is something I want to investigate in full. That doesn't mean I'm willing to take action for the sake of a few strangers. He literally just said, I do whatever the fuck I want. It doesn't matter. Though he rejects the notion of greater moral responsibility, he justifies his actions because they are true to his personal motivations. Someone like him might actually make for a better ally. Ooh. Hyman's been wanting to say this for a while. There are a lot of bad guys in the academia, but you're not one of them. You're their weirdo. <laughs> you're probably right. <laughs> Though I must say, I quite enjoy this feeling of being the odd one out. Uniqueness is also an asset, is it not? Wow, that's a great way to think about it. Paimon's really impressed. <laughs> if only Miss Shuri cool had a to be unique. mindset, her life would definitely be a lot easier. I'm just a more likable person than her in general. There's nothing more to it than that. You know what they say, <sighs> it's hip to be square. All right, what should we do with him? He won't last long if we leave him here. Let's take him with us. Plato eater and we'll work out our next step York after we return to our village. Smells. Thank you so much for the subs. An astrobotany. Thank you so much for subscribing. An FN Siri. Although I already said thanks to him. <clears throat> anyway, let's uh, go back to the village chief's house and meet up with everybody else after our fun adventure in this haunted mansion. He really said he's not like other girls. <sighs> My voice is super shitty because I did an audition that required a lot of guttural screaming. We're back! You must be tired. You should rest and take some water. What's the situation? Hmm? Who's this? Unfortunately, somebody who's too young to take on the role of Isak's grandfather. Nevertheless, he's one of the people we're trying to find. So, at one point in time, the abandoned Elazar Hospital served as the Academia's site, for extracting divine cant knowledge. Yep, pretty much. Their plan must have been pretty implemented much, at some point before we arrived at Aru Village, since divine cant knowledge has been in circulation for a while now. Yet, they fled once we were headed to the village, almost as if they knew we were on their trail. Why is that? Why is we that? We have a mole in our midst. A mole? One of us could be secretly revealing our whereabouts to the academia. Huh? Are our friendships that shallow? Hmm. Looks like none of you have realized wherein lies the issue. <laughs> As always, I already know the answer to everything. Sino, you're the reason why they can predict our movements. Choose your next words very carefully, it or else I'm going to have to reference influence. baseball again. I have my reasons. That strike one, I'll hate them. Which is from baseball, which exists in Tevat, by the way. So what you're saying is, Sino's the mole. Interesting. And here I thought you were the most suspicious one, I'll hate them, since you were always acting alone. I know. You have a point, but I realized something as we were returning from the hospital. Sino isn't like any of us. What are you trying to say? Do you still remember who you are, General Mahamatra? Uh, 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 huh? Huh? <laughs> 
As a Matra, you are no doubt privy to certain kinds of information. Before you can take action against someone, you are required to have all the facts available, including the less than savory details. Oh, I thought he was, like, de deconstructing his entire, like, personality. Like, do you, do you even know who you are? Simply put, the Academia has traditionally allowed you access to a wealth of sensitive information. Knowing their modus operandi, wouldn't you expect them to take precautions against you? If you want to raise a vicious wolf, you need to make sure that you can avoid its bite. I'm not a wolf. I'm a jackal. The Academia is monitoring me? It's not that simple. Oh. The Academia has eyes all over Sumeru, but they have a special protocol for dealing with you. Every so often comes a Nyagarbaha day. On this day, the Academia enters new information into the Akasha through knowledge capsules. I remember seeing the thick notebook next to the control panel once. Its contents were all about the General Mahamatra, his activities throughout the day, preferred methods of enacting judgment, everything. Everything. You're saying that the Academia entered my information into the Akasha too? But what's the point in doing that? My actions aren't important enough to be added into the Akasha. What do you mean not important enough? You're literally like... Fucking... You're the, the hired gun of the Academia. The Akasha is capable of computation. <laughs> the Akasha's algorithms Math. are entirely <laughs> capable of predicting your movements using the data entered. When you would depart, the route you would follow, your destination. It knew all of this. It predicted my every move. The Academia has been watching you longer than you think. However... The fact that you resigned is proof that their suspicions were well-founded. You're getting replaced by AI, Sino. This became really topical all of a sudden. So that's how it is. Sino adheres to his principles so strongly that he's actually a thorn in their side. Tenacity of will and steadfast faith are worthless to the Academia. They need scholars who are easily pliable and mindlessly go after anything they can profit from. Sino, don't take it to heart. This just proves how much of a trustworthy ally you are. <sighs> they escaped because of me. Don't blame yourself. It's not like any of us would have known. Exactly. I have an idea. If they predicted my movements, then I might be able to guess where they went. Whoa, you bounced back fast. There is always an opportunity for safety after danger passes. Oh, so that's how it is! Paimon gets it now! If the Academia is trying to avoid Sino, then the safest place would be... One step behind him. Yep, that's right! They'll want to proceed in the direction opposite of where I'm going. You're getting smarter, Paimon. Those books really... really did the trick. I must go. There's also something I want to investigate. Let's go, guys! After him! Please, wait! I want to go, too! Yeah! Hmm. You want to go, too? If so, you have to promise you'll stay safe. And then this kid fucking pulls out a vision. And, like, a, a, like a great sword. I want to find Grandpa! I promise I'll be careful and not cause any trouble. Everyone, I leave him in your hands. Yay, let's go! Remember to pack some food with you. Paimon feels like we're missing someone, though. Hmm. Probably isn't important. I'm voicing Ether like Joey Wheeler. I mean, I could go more Joey if I wanted to. God, I still think about that moment where me and Alejandro both said Time Wizard at the exact same time. I love my friends, chat. I'm thankful for them.
into the desert. Sino, do you remember the route you took? Yes. After leaving the village, we should head straight toward the desert. Whoa, the desert? Ah, jeez, Yugs, I didn't bring my sunscreen. My I'm gonna get hell zitch. Is that because you play here a lot? Yep. One time, Grandpa almost got lost in the desert. But I was the one who brought him back. There's something here. What's this? It's buried in the sand. Hmm. Looks like we'll need to roll up our sleeves and do some work. <sighs> Homie, you don't the have any sleeves to... Never mind. Was already enough work. Now isn't the time for complaining, Paimon. Okay, okay. Kuna with yeah, Shane. Whatever's down there, it looks like it's buried really deep. These are likely fragments of an academia-developed device, something akin to a headset. Looks like there were more than one village keeper. They must have been escorted this way because there are device fragments scattered around here. Let's it's the, it's the diadem. Area. Chances are that we'll find other things nearby. Is this what we're searching for? It looks kind of scary. How is it scary? What? Huh? Huh? What? Huh? How is it scary? It's it's just. Paimon, it is a hunk of metal. This is definitely a device used to extract divine knowledge. How did it end up buried in the sand? That can't have been part of the plan. They must have been attacked along the way. Wait, what? Grandpa, I hope you're okay. Don't worry, your grandpa's gonna be fine. Razak didn't display any signs of starvation or dehydration, which means that they left fairly recently. We should be able to catch up. One more thing. Given that the device had been entirely covered by sand, I believe the attack must have happened prior to the sandstorm. I agree. Go, Flame Swordsman! <laughs> Let's keep going. They can't have gone far. Oh, God. Ben, do you have a favorite you're Pokemon? Flying, you, um, Totodile. Is flying over sand tiring too? Ugh, of course it is. Voices over there. That sounds like an argument. Whoa, you have really good ears. It's, it's the it's the jackal ears. Don't get any closer. They'll notice us. Dia's talking with the Aramites? Hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. Let's listen in. What's my favorite Eevee evolution? Probably Umbreon. If you had informed me sooner, there'd be plenty of room for us to You're one of us. We would never lie. Scholars. You don't know as much as I do. Need me to I feel like they were trying to make it so we could only hear bits and pieces of the um, the conversation. But to me, it comes across as them just being like, We didn't... Opening the gate... I need to do... Like, it's... It needed... The, the, the audio mixing needed to be... Changed in a way that, like, it could naturally drown out what they were saying. But here, it, they're just like stopping what they're saying and it sounds really artificial and like fake and not good um so yeah <laughs> i knew it that's our dia Sia? why would you it should fade in and out or something or have like the wind blow harder like they should say the full sentence of what they're saying and, like, the audio mixing should naturally cover it up. But I guess that just wasn't in the cards. Dia! Hey, what are you doing? Huh? Didn't you say you'd help me find Grandpa? Why, why are you on their side? 
I like how nobody stopped this child from running in. To, like, why didn't... They're just like, let's just let this kid run in. We have all hate them and Sino, who are both, like, super fast, like, secret agent Batman people, and they couldn't stop this child. <laughs> well, look who's here. Ain't that something? Ugh, this complicates things. You've betrayed Aru Village? We were gonna stop the child, but this is funnier. So, this is the great General Mahamatra. Dear, you'd be better off as my assistant than hanging around with this motley crew. Seen for yourself, I have the means and methods, and my ideals are far more admirable. Sino doesn't know how to stop people, just kill them. Yeah. I'm not the type that's easily swayed, Raman. You of all people should know that. Wait, what's going on, Dia? Whose side are you on here? Shut it, Paimon. Oh my god. Thank you. She said, shut it, Paimon! What a legend. It doesn't matter. Whichever side you pick, nothing can deter us from the grand mission of resurrecting King Deshret. Once our Lord of Old returns to this land, we will have a new beginning. A new age. Face the facts, Raman. It's not gonna happen. You should understand that more than anyone. Have all your years as a merc taught you nothing about placing hopes in a ruler? I'm a desert dweller and a proud follower of King Deshret. Whether I live by the edge of the sword or in peaceful comfort, my soul will always carry this conviction. It's not too late yet. The village keep... <clears throat> mad scholars aren't gonna bring King Deshret back to life. You don't understand, my dear lady. Pursuing our faith is our purpose in life. Even if the chance of success is one in a million, we must be willing to give everything we have. Even if it'll expose you to the academia? Even if they end up disbanding the Aramites? Your Aramites, which you've worked so hard for all these years? Ben, did you do the Roses and Muskets event? No, but I watched somebody else do them. Yes. <sighs> We've waited a long time for this day to come. The sun and the moon no longer shine here. All you see now is cracks in this desiccated land. But fate has finally dealt me a hand to play against the Academia. They gave me a hand of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. With these scholars in our custody, we'll stomp the Academia's forces and fight our way beyond the wall of Samuel. When are you going to do Kave Hangout? Um... There's a logical route that you can take to answer that question, chat member. In order to do Kaveh's Hangout, I think I need to do Alhatham's Story Quest. And in order to do Alhatham's Story Quest, I need to finish the Archon Quest. Ridiculous. Think about it. Thus, the Academia controls I'll do it the entirety of Samaria. after I finish Your Alhatham's Story Quest, in comparison. which I'll do after I finish the Archon Quest. If you still don't believe me, then try asking these two men. They're also against the Academia, but neither of them are as arrogant as you are. <laughs> they look more like pawns of the Academia to me. Why would I listen to anything the people of Greater Lord Ruka Devada have to say? Kaveh's hangout was so great. <laughs> I sure hope so. Filthy traitors. Or else, or else I fucked up. <laughs> abandon all honor and betrayed King Deshret. We desert dwellers will never trust the likes of you. It's impossible to communicate with someone so hostile. Homie, you literally tried to kill us when we first entered Aru Village. Perhaps we should. Perhaps we should kill them. Do you really believe that by kidnapping the scholars, you'll be able to negotiate with the academia? <laughs> I'll hate them. These people have no value as bargaining chips. But I could be persuaded to take their place as your next hostage. I am very happy with a lot of people's reactions to the hangout. I I did my best in a lot of the um a lot of the routes. These scholars were exiled from the academia. I, on the other hand, am their current scribe and will be a much greater asset to you. I'm so much better than you. Wait, you can't be serious. 
I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. So, you want to trade places with the hostages, do you? Is it just me, or did he, like, slur that line a little bit? Oh, you want to trade places with the hostages, do you? Precisely. Any wise person would gladly accept my offer. What are you thinking? What if they decide to kill you instead? That's this is the the uh, the the kind of shitty thing about being a voice actor is that you pick up a lot on like some of the mistakes that people make. But on the flip side, you can appreciate a really good performance like a lot more. Well, that would be bad luck for me. However, I'd get the chance to observe the scholars. Perhaps even find out the truth. <sighs> <laughs> Think you can talk me over with that confident look of yours? I'm not trying to persuade you. I'm using this as a means of joining forces against the Academia. You are the scribe. What do you have against the Academia? <laughs> if I die, I die. Not all desert dwellers believe in King Deshret, and the same applies to the Academia. Why must all knowledge seekers approve of the Academia's way of doing things? Man, like, Ahithan legit is like a fantastic character. It, he, it, he is just so cool. <laughs> you Academia scum. Every last one of you is nothing but a hypocrite, just like everyone else on the other side of that wall. I've made myself clear enough. I won't listen to another word from the Dendro Archon's people. He legit doesn't give a shit about, like, anything. He's just like, I want to do this. And if I die, then, oh well. Also, somebody earlier asked if they should watch Undead Unluck. Yes, please do. Don't even watch it because I'm voicing the lead. Watch it because it is genuinely one of the best stories that's come out of Shonen Jump in years. I promise you, it does start out a little rough. It is, like, it gets so much better. Like, every... From from the first episode, it's, it's just nonstop upward trending. Where, where can you watch it outside the U.S.? Wherever um, Disney Plus has stuff. Your country's equivalent of Disney Plus. Not so fast. I'll hate them. Do you stand by everything you just said? Because, like, I read all of the manga for Undone Unluck. And, like, it's so good, you guys. It's fucking peak. And just now, there's been, like, a mass... Um, like, mini exodus of Jujutsu Kaisen fans that have been moving to different, uh, Shonen Jumps. Um, and a lot of them have been reading on Dead Unluck, and they're, like, I've been seeing so many people be like, What the fuck? This is peak. This is so good. Why is, like, nobody talking about this? Yeah, the manga is still going. And who do I voice? I voice Andy! The main character. He's sick. He's wicked sick! I don't get to talk like this that often, so it's super fun for me. <laughs> I never make empty promises. Huh. You know you're making a dangerous decision, right? Is that what the guttural screaming was for? No, that was auditions for something else. I do. Good. Raman, hear me out. These people are my friends. Maybe you can't take the followers of the Dendro Archon at their word, but what about me? Do you trust me? We've known each other for years. Of course I do. Yeah, I'm the MC, the main character of, uh, of the show. Although I would say Fuko is the real main character. In that case, I'm willing to vouch for their honesty with my right arm. Uh, 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 uh. Come on, Raman, don't be a coward. If you're serious about taking on the Academia, you need to steal yourself. Yeah, you JJK, the anime's done, so there's, like, a lot of people that are hungry for... for, uh... for a, another shonen to... to sink their teeth into, and Undead's... Undead and Luck is just so good, you guys. It's so good. <laughs> An arm from the flame main. You've piqued my interest. Like, I don't even care if you watch it dubbed or not, just, just like, consume that media. 
I promise you it'll be worth it. But what if you refuse to oblige? What should I do then? No one's a fool here, Dia. We're mercs. And mercs don't tend to live long unless they have their wits about them. You're not wrong, but this is different. I promised my friends that we'd bring back the village keepers together. <laughs> Let's do it right here then. Give me your right arm as proof of your resolve. <laughs> Why did somebody with the name Suk Sukuna Gojo said Lobotomy Kaisen? <laughs> What did you mean by that? Don't listen to him! He's not even trying to negotiate! He just wants to make things more difficult! D is, has Jujutsu Kaisen gotten that bad? Because from what I've heard, it's f fantastic. I only read the first... I watched the first episode and thought it was really good. But then just didn't follow up on it because I don't have time for a lot of things. Oh, someone posted aware, so <laughs> maybe I'm just not aware. The manga is a mess right now? How? Oh, I mean, I don't want you guys to spoil me, just in case I do end up reading it, but, like... Like, is it just a bunch of people are suddenly making really dumb mistakes, or... I've seen so many people post the nah, I'd win panel. No spoilers, but author just... Hmm. They all are dying. Hmm. Curious. It just got really bright all of a sudden. That's fine. Are you crazy? We came here to save lives. One arm for that many people is still a pretty good deal, if you ask me. Ramon, I'm holding up my end of the deal here. You'd better not let me down. Yeah, just relax with the spoilers, guys. Sure. Go ahead and cut off her right arm. Oh, oh, here we go. No! No! Dia, what are you gonna do? Think of something! I don't know. It'd be pretty rad to see an arm get cut off. You don't have to go this far. That's not for you to decide. Look, guys, even if a, if a manga is... If you're worried about a manga killing off your, your fave, you don't have to worry with Undead Unluck. Because Andy's literally unkillable. He'll never die. So just make Andy from Undead Unluck your fave, and he will be there forever. Do it! What do you mean for now? He's un- Listen, he negates the concept of death. He literally cannot die. No matter what. <laughs> like you. <laughs> yeah, I will live forever as well. Thanks for the spoilers. It's in the name of the manga! Uh, stop. Okay, so this dude was in the middle of cutting off Dia's arm, and Ram Ramon's just like, Ugh, Stop. What does unluck mean? That's Fuko's power. She negates the concept of luck, so anybody that she touches uh, suffers extreme bad luck. And it's proportional to how much uh, she likes them. What's wrong? Can't do it? And it's also proportional to, like, how long she touches them for. Flame Main, you and I are both desert folk. Cutting off your arm is no different than cutting off my own fingers. Where's the sense in cutting my own kin to pieces? So if, like, Fuko really likes somebody and she touches them on the shoulder for, like, a second, it would lead to, like, 
a truck crashing into the person or something. But if she likes the person and she puts her hand on their shoulder for, like, a solid two minutes, it would probably lead to, like, several explosions or something. Like, uh, like several mortar shells or something. I don't know. It's a shonen and a rom-com? Pretty much. It's honestly got one of the best romance stories out of any uh, shonen manga out right now. Yeah, and that's why she's the perfect pair for Andy, who just can't die. And they, they co-op shit. Since Andy can't die, what Fuko does is that she uh, quote-unquote charges him with unluck. So she just, like, puts her hands on his shoulders or whatever. And he just charges up the unluck, and Andy just runs in and fucking whatever happens to him happens to all the bad guys, too, so... It's great. It's really cool. It's like a, it's the, she like kisses him at one point and it makes a meteor come down and destroy everything around him. So it's a really cool way of doing like co-op uh, fights. Their powers synergize really well. And there's a lot of that in um, in the show. I'm, I, I just want to talk about this story so much. There's one character whose power is unmove. And he negates movement. And the way it works is that if he stands still, he's, if he stands completely still, and if he isn't moving, everything in his field of vision stops moving as well. So it's like a localized time stop. And normally, on a one-on-one -on -one situation, that would be kind of a stalemate, where he would just stand there and stare, and the other person wouldn't be able to attack. So they'd just be staying in place until what uh, he moves. But in team fights, it's fucking busted. Because all he needs to do is stare at the bad guy and, and somebody else can come in and clean up. And like this, this, this show is like this series is so full of really cool things like that. Yeah, he can breathe. Basically, he, he can't just move his body. Dude, uh, Undead Unlocked power system is so fucking good, guys. It's so fucking good. Like, and also, like, God, there's more I want to talk about, but you guys just need to fucking watch it. It's so good. And I, I do kind of want to watch uh, Bungo Stray Dogs, because I heard it's also really good. And, like, it also has good power systems. But Undead Unlock is just, like... Just the idea of, like, every power just being a negation of, like, a basic rule of reality. Like, that makes it so interesting. God. And it's also based on, like, the negator's perception of the rule. Like, there's one dude called Unavoidable. Um, and his power makes it so you, your all of your muscles basically stop moving if he stances up. So you can't avoid his attacks. Hence, Unavoidable. But there's a a, uh, a dude before him that had unavoidable, and it basically meant that luck, uh, or like, he would use it to win lottery tickets, because he would basically consider the money to be unavoidable. Like, it's based on your perception of your rule, and it's like, God, it's so cool! It's so cool. It's really cool. And, like, the the characters, their powers grow based on just how much they understand their, their rule is the thing. Like, another example, Unseen. It's a dude that every time he closes his eyes, he becomes invisible. He negates being seen. But then, but he still, like, has weight, so he can be seen by a scale. So he realizes that. And upon realizing that, he he can negate his weight to be truly unseen. Like, it's, it, like, th that's how his power grows. It's so cool, God. Does it have a ton of fan service? Only at the beginning. It started out, uh, it starts off a bit fan servicey just because of the way that Foucault's power works. Um, and also the fact that Andy is basically naked for the first four episodes because... His clothes don't regenerate whenever he dies. Um, so he, you just, he has, uh, 
he has just a little sensor bar for a lot of the fights. Um, the show is called Undead Unluck. Hey, you can up? find it on Hulu or Disney Plus. Please go watch it. I love it so much. I want to talk to more people about it, but nobody's <laughs> fucking watched it. And yeah, like, the first episode is kind of fan y and it does kind of get a little... Uh, um, but I promise you, like, after episode four, Gamers. basically nothing inappropriate happens anymore. Like, it, that, the, from four onwards, it becomes amazing. It's, it's so good, you guys. It's so good. Every character is, like, the best fucking character. And they're all so cool. The, all of their negator powers are so cool. <laughs> You've shown me that you're serious. Go on now, take your friends and leave. I just want to talk about Undead Unluck all the time now. And I want to talk more about, like, the different powers and how fucking cool they are, but... I don't want to spoil too much. Phew. I was really counting on him not going through with it. Right now, uh, there's 13 episodes out. Uh, the first, like, core is done. And then there's going to be another 12, I think, afterwards. Uh, for the dub, only four episodes are out. But on Wednesday, it'll be episode five. Dia! That was crazy. Have you all lost your minds? What if he'd actually cut your arm off? Paimon, it would have been like that scene from One Piece where Zoro goes into that sword shop and he's shopping for a new sword to replace the one that he lost and then the owner's like, well, I've got this cursed sword and then he throws it up in the air and and Zoro's like, I'm going to test my luck versus the sword and he holds out his arm and it almost cuts it off, but it doesn't. And then he's like, yeah, I'm going to take this sword. Watch One Piece as well. <laughs> And I just have to hold my claymore with my left arm. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but sometimes when you're out on spoilers, a hello. Okay, this is like deal, you know that was on like episode fucking twenty of a thousand, and also that episode aired like fifteen years ago. Don't ever make a promise like that again. I can deal with the likes of them. If it came down to it. You would not lose to them either. Oh, dude, the, the new opening is so good for One Piece. I don't doubt it, Sino. But this is about more than me and them. There's a lot more where they came from. It wouldn't be spoiling if you already watched the shows that I talk about, chat. God. Even if we got rid of one bunch of radicals, there are others out there. Wiping them out would do more harm than good. If, if, um... Who's my favorite One Piece character? Uh... Like, out of the Straw Hats, or out of everybody? I spoiled JJK manga. All I did was read out what chat was saying. Like, chat has been saying stuff, and I... They said things. Ben, are you by any chance a little bit neo-divergent? Is being passionate about the things that you like a sign of neo-divergence? And I'm, I'm assuming you mean neurodivergence. Am I not allowed to be enthusiastic about things, chat? I save my energy for when I'm passionate about things. That's why um, I can go all out in the booth because I'm really passionate about acting and I go all out. I, I, because the thing is, here's a bit of lore for you guys. I'm not like upset about this or anything. I'm just fucking with you guys just a little bit for asking really weird questions. Um, I used, I grew up being a pretty emotionless kid outside of my acting, but I was very quiet growing up. <laughs> I was always, uh, like, in the back, like, just keeping to myself. 
and I would, you know, have headphones on, and I would play Game Boy, because I didn't really want to talk to anybody, and I was just depressed all the time. Um, so, like, being enthusiastic about the things that I like, it's kind of a new thing for me, and I really enjoy it. It's fun. It's fun to be passionate about things. That's why, like, whenever anybody apologizes for, like, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the thing that I, I like. Like, I can't believe people would do that. Talking about your passions is fucking beautiful. Unless your passion is, like, clown humiliation porn, then... I don't know, man, maybe I'd keep that to myself. Not to yuck your yum, but... Maybe, maybe not this time. Listen, don't, don't ask questions, chat. Don't tell me where I, where I pulled that one from. Just, just back off, okay? As you wish. Ben, you have something to tell us? <laughs> Embrace your passions. Live life to the fullest. There is joy to be, to be found in every day. I'm sorry, Dia. I should have stayed put and listened. I should It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> I promised you I'd true. help find your grandpa. So, so true. I'll do whatever it takes. So you hate clowns? I actually love clowns. I think they're really funny. I'm genuinely one of those people that like will see a clown do the clown thing and then like genuinely enjoy it. All right, who uh, who was my favorite One Piece character? Pedro. Who I ended up voicing. But uh, favorite straw hat is either Sanji or um, or Brooke. Although Robin is also really good. Yeah, I voice Pedro in One Piece. He was my favorite reading the manga, and like as soon as we like we started, I started to get involved in voice acting with. Um, uh, when we were doing, when they were Thank doing Tress Rosa, <laughs> and I knew that Zoe was coming up, and I was like, please, 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 if if you guys are gonna have auditions for Zoe, please let me read for Pedro, please. And th I, they did send me uh, an audition for Pedro, and I put my heart and soul into it, and then I booked it. And I remember exactly the the moment that I booked it, because. I was on vocal rest because my throat was, like, destroyed. And, uh, the rest of my house was doing a Walla session for One Piece with the director. And I was like, I'm going to back out of it because, you know, my throat's killing me and I don't, I want to rest up. Um, but one of the boys came up and was like, hey, uh, the director wants to talk to you about One Piece real quick. So I went down and the director was like, hey, Ben, you don't have to talk. You don't have to react or anything. Uh, but you booked Pedro. You're going to be Pedro. And I, like, really wanted to scream. Uh, but I couldn't because I was on vocal rest, so I was just, like, violently pumping my fist. I was like... Ah! It was so good. It felt amazing. Have I seen the live-action One Piece? Yes. I think it's really good. The, uh, the Discord server is exclamation mark Discord, but yeah, um, I've been, it's moments like those guys where like, I, I'm blessed. I, I feel like I've, I've, I, I feel blessed sometimes. It makes me happy. Whatever it takes. <laughs> you just might be scholar material. <laughs> Have you considered reading books? What's my favorite One Piece arc? Um... Probably... Fuck, that's a tough question. Um... I mean, Marineford is really good. Uh... Annie's Lobby was also really good. Um... There's a lot. So many arcs in One Piece are really good. 
Um, and I guess maybe Alabasta. Because that's where I feel like I really, really got, like, hooked on One Piece. That one had a lot of really good fights, too, and and um, the ending is really good. Whole Cake is, is also good, no For bias, sure. but God, Whole Cake had so many fucking good moments. Huh? Are you serious? The Eremites once said that I was a lunatic. Perhaps a little madness is essential to be successful in research. Wano would be... Oh, somebody redeemed hamburger? Hamburger. Uh, thank you for that. Um... Yeah. I would like Wano more if it wasn't so long. It's kind of the reason why I don't like Dressrosa all that much either, because I feel like it was way too long. Like, they're, they're still really fucking good arcs. Uh, like, especially Wano, but, like, I feel like they went on for just a hair longer than I would have liked. Why does it feel like he's using his praise for me as an excuse to brag about himself? Doflamingo is fantastic, though. He's... Super good, like one of the best villains in the in the whole series. Whole cake is long too, but I feel like it got split up in a better way. Like having Zoe and uh, be a uh, like a part of it, and just like the different um, storylines happening. It just whole cake didn't feel as long. Isn't One Piece just super long in general, though? Yes, but you don't really feel the length of it, because you kind of get into each arc one by one. And, like, just the way that it's paced, in the manga at least, it doesn't feel as long as it is. Yeah, Alabasta is where, where, just, like, where I think the series really fucking hit its stride. But, like, there's so much stuff, like, like, um... Like, Arlong Park is such a, such a good arc. And, um... I think that, like, if you, if you're not on board by... By... Like, I always tell people, like, at least watch until the end of Arlong Park. Uh, there is, if anybody is interested in watching One Piece, like the anime, um, Google One Pace. O-N-E, uh, P-A-C-E. It is a fan edit of One Piece, uh, that cuts down a lot of the fat. Uh, I think it cuts down the length of each, um, like, of the entire series by, like, a solid quarter. And it makes everything a lot easier to digest, because it's just paced a lot better. So, if you guys are interested in One Piece, uh, One Piece is uh, highly recommended. We're not going to get to Kaveh's Hangout until 2025 at this point, crying emoji. Um, imagine me staring at you with the deepest disappointment in my eyes. Okay, let's get moving. We should head back to the village and rest up. Today was just a trial run. Noon tomorrow is gonna be the hard part. Like I'm I obviously I know you're 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 joking around. But also like <laughs> This game has a lot of talking in it. Okay. Kuska? I tried voice acting, starting voice acting this year, last year. However, due to my day job as a baker, my progress is inconsistent trying to make a schedule to practice this year. Can you relate? Uh, I did voice acting when I had a full-time job as a tech support person. Um, 
the thing about voice acting is that it's very malleable. And you can make it work around your schedule. If you can only send one audition a day, or one audition like a week, or one audition a month, as long as you're still sending in that audition, like you're pro you're making progress. How many auditions do I do in a week? It really depends on what I get sent. Sometimes I do more, sometimes I do less. Um... How did I start? When did you decide to go into voice acting? Uh, when I realized that voice acting was just theater acting, but I didn't need to have a stage. I could just act. Because uh, I used to be a stage actor uh, growing up. Uh, and I just wanted to act. I had like a voracious hunger for acting. Because uh, it's just so much fun and it makes me feel alive. And voice acting just lets me do it whenever. Like I don't have to drive to a theater. I could just do it from my house. Favorite musical slash play? My favorite musical is Avenue Q. Um, and my favorite play would probably be Neil Simon's Rumors. Do you have any advice on how to start? Uh, there should be a link in, uh, in the FAQ. But if not, then go to voiceactingclub.com and uh, do that. Don't make a demo reel if you're starting out. Do not make a demo. I'm going to switch to fucking Wanderer. Don't make a demo reel if you're starting out. A demo reel is for when you know exactly what your strengths are. I'm cheating. Search for Yeah, I know I could have used all hate them, but I prefer Wanderer. Because floating up is cool. Anyway, um don't make a demo if you start acting out. Literally just audition for shit. Just audition. Like acting as a job is just auditioning. So I think the best way to get started is to just audition and see what that feels like. If you can enjoy just auditioning, and you're, you're happy just auditioning and acting with your auditions, you've literally already won. Like, that's the win condition for acting. It's just auditioning and enjoying it. If you can do that, then you, 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 you win. Because you can do it forever. And you will eventually uh, book stuff and then make stuff there and... Booking stuff is literally just auditioning, but you get to do it more. You vo voice act from home, not in the studio. It depends on the job. Some places let me record from home. Uh, some places let me uh, have me drive to a studio. Thank you for the soup time. I've been talking a lot. What about Genshin? Genshin lets me record from home. It's been a hot minute since I've recorded, so maybe that'll change now that I'm in Los Angeles. I don't know. I'm just killing time at this point. I should probably do the wait thing. I also kind of want to switch games. We've been playing for two and a half hours. And I, there's a game that I really want to show you guys. Because I think it's really cool. And I, I am debating on whether or not to have it be its own stream or I just want to show a bit of it. Um, but there's a, there's a game that I tried for a bit. Like I played it for like a few hours. And then I was like, fuck, I really want to show chat this. Because it's something that nobody seems to be playing. And nobody seems to be talking about. And it's really cool. Oh, I overshot the fucking time. Ugh. You like cool stuff? It's not Lego Fortnite.
Yeah, like these, like, wait until following morning things are the best times to- I know that I'm not going at this at a fast pace, but we, trust me, all of the Genshin stuff will be streamed. Like, I will not rest until we get through all of Sumeru, and then I'll hate them story stuff, and then Kaveh's Hangouts. Like, after I do all of that is when I'll, like, start slacking off hardcore with Genshin. But we will, at the very least, get all that done on stream, so don't you worry, chat. Don't you worry. Can you see my team parties? Sure. One. Two. Three. Four. And I think the rest is just... Why is Deluke his own team? I don't remember why I did that. And the rest is unfilled. Just Deluke. Solo Deluke. <laughs> anyway, uh, the game is the game a baseball game? No, unfortunately it has nothing to do with baseball. Stay safe and don't get hurt. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm going to switch games. If you guys want to stick around and check this game out, it's really cool. It's an indie game, if that helps. With a pixel art art style. So, let me just switch games real quick. Also, the music it has is fucking awesome. This is one of those indie games where I'm like, this should have a, a, a bigger fan base than it does already. But the thing is, I I haven't heard anybody talk about this game. You guys are saying Celeste. Like, no! Everybody's talked about Celeste. That game has, like, merch. But the thing about this game that really drove, like, I, somebody mentioned it to me, and they were like, this game is going to be the next big thing. And I went on the Steam page, and it's only got, like, 742 reviews. But they're, they're from people that have, like, 130 hours logged in it, and they're like, this game is fucking huge.